I'm not sure there's that much overcapacity in high purity silicon, but you know, where are the challenges? What's dynamics going on there? I mean, I, the thing, I think the first thing I'd like to mention is that high quality is indeed very, very important in this industry. And uh, it's one of the areas where, uh, where Dow Corning, you know, being the majority owner of Hemlock Semiconductor, has really invested over the years. Um, uh, our background is really make, in making polysilicon for the semiconductor industry going back 50 years. And, and we've kept that quality standard high. And I think that's going to be really important going forward. And it's true that su mark, you know, supply demand dynamics are really tough right now. Uh, but at the end of the day, it's the players with the highest quality uh, who really invest uh, in, in capacity, but also invest in R&D to keep that quality high and to keep ahead of the game. Those are the players who are going to do well uh, long term. Well, another aspect here as well, um, the whole sort of thin silicon rather than thin film. Um, even with the prices that we've seen polysilicon fall to, we still need thinner wafers. We still need to reduce the overall, you know, content of silicon, you know, in, in a cell. Um, going down to say 100 micron technology, we're going to need to really reinvent the wheel in, in the actual assembly side. Can you give us some idea what's going on there? I agree with that. Uh, the, uh... One of the best ways to reduce cost is to, redu to use less. And it's not only on the wafer side, it's also thinner glass or you know, no frame or, or whatever is possible. It's, uh, I agree that thinner wafers is definitely a direction that the industry is going to head in. I think the roadmaps on that are relatively clear across the different research institutes or, or companies. I think 100 micron, as you mentioned, I think it is in the realm of possibilities, uh, maybe in the next five years or so. And the challenges are there. The challenges are around um, how do you encapsulate, for instance, a thin cell like that? Um, uh, how do you make sure that it doesn't break when you manufacture the module? How do you make sure there is no stress in that wa wafer you know, when you go forward, it's, uh, when you go uh, into the installation? Of course, there is going to be challenges around uh, not only the assembly, but also uh, the efficiency of that cell. Because a 100 micron wafer uh, brings some new challenges in terms of passivation, passivation layers, uh, maybe metallization will have to be relocked, etc. So there is a lot of challenges, and, uh, and it's a great example of where that industry roadmap has to come together, uh, because clearly, as an example for thinner uh, wafers, encapsulation will really have to be looked at, and I think the future is indeed in a very different assembly technology for modules, and it's one of the things we're working on.